Hello, this is Brian Rowe with another MTG deck tech. This is for a legacy deck that I call Wizards for the Win, and it is my first attempt at abusing the new Avacyn Restored cards in a competitive environment. This looks at two cards in particular, Temporal Mastery, which you see right here, um, and the new Cavern of Souls. Uh, I'm going to talk about Cavern of Souls later, but let's start with Temporal Mastery. So Temporal Mastery is a sorcery for 7 casting cost. It's take an extra turn after this one and then exile Temporal Mastery. Uh, at first it seems pretty unplayable, especially in an environment in which games are often over in the first 4 rounds, but the key here is that this uses the new Miracle mechanic. And what Miracle allows you to do is you may cast this card for its Miracle cost when you draw it, if it is the first card you drew this turn. Let's talk about that for a second. This means that you need to kind of radically change the way that you draw cards. Most players quickly draw their first card, putting it into their hand. If you do that, you're not going to be able to use the triggered ability. What I've started to do with this card, or with all cards and all my decks, is take the, car, the first card that I draw each turn, turn it sideways, look at it, uh, count to one, and look at it as if I'm trying to decide whether or not to cast the Miracle um, cost to it, even if I don't. Even if I don't have a Miracle card in the deck, it makes my opponent think that there could be one and then put it into my hand and kind of create that new order uh, and habit so that I don't accidentally miss it. Because if I miss casting this for its Miracle cost, that could easily cost a game. Uh, second thing is, this Miracle ability allows you to ignore the other requirements on the card, such as the fact that it's a sorcery. If during your draw step you're able to cast this, and even during your opponent's turn you would be able to cast this. So let's look at some of the interactions here in the deck and why I think that this deck is prime for abusing Temporal Mastery. Number one, a big drawback with Temporal Mastery is the seven casting cost, so if you get this in your opening hand, you have to mulligan. In the Legacy, this is not a problem because Brainstorm allows you to put cards from your hand back on top of your deck. This is golden. It means that you no longer have to mulligan with this card, and you can set up your draws so that you're able to use the card when it is most useful to you. The sec and I've got a few other deck manipulation cards to help enable this. In the sorcery area, I'm using Personal Tutor. Personal Tutor is an old portal card that allows you to search your deck for a sorcery and reveal it to all players, shuffle the deck afterwards, and put it on top. And most of the other search cards, like Vampiric Tutor, are already banned in the Legacy environment that would normally let you put, the, put a card like this on top. But Personal Tutor, I think, has been overlooked because it um, was from Portal and it had limited applications until this new Miracle set Miracle Mechanic has come out in Avacyn. Um, another card that I've gotten here to help abuse it is Ponder. Um, it's nowhere near as powerful as Brainstorm because it doesn't fix the drawing in your opening hand problem, but it is it's still an extremely nice way to manipulate your deck. Now you do have to be careful on this because if you reshuffle your deck and then draw, and this is your second draw in the turn, as it's likely going to be during a sorcery, you could end up putting that Miracle card into your hand. Another thing in here that's really a lot that really should help in um, abusing this card overall is Jace the Mind Sculptor, who's obviously broken in and of himself, um, but Jace uh, gives you that brainstorm ability. So I've really got five brainstorms in here, and if you count the snap casters as additional uh, brainstorms, because there's often going to be a brainstorm in the graveyard, we're actually up to eight possible brainstorms in the deck and two temporal masteries. I did try running this deck with three temporal masteries, and the number of times I just drew it in opening hand without a brainstorm was way too high. I, I think two is the right number in this type of a deck. Um, some of the other things, the other mechanic that I'm trying to abuse here is Cavern of Souls. Cavern of Souls, I think, is going to radically change the power dynamic in 
pretty much every environment. Blue is going to be severely harmed by this card. Cavern of Souls, basically, when it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. You can add one colorless mana for at any time, and you can add one mana of any color to use on creatures of the chosen type, and those creatures cannot be countered. This is just incredibly amazing. I, uh, Wizards had mentioned that this was supposed to negate some of the power of Snapcaster Mage, but I think what they've actually done is severely increase the power of Snapcaster. Let's notice my, the creature suite here. I mean the deck Wizards for the wind because Dark Confidant is a human wizard. Snapcaster is a human wizard. Delver of Secrets is a human wizard. And Vendillion Click is a fairy wizard. So in this deck, with Cavern of Souls, I simply name wizards, and all of my creatures are now uncounterable. This, this crushes blue and control in a legacy environment and allows you to get out some incredible cards. Snapcaster is card advantage at that point extremely easily. Um, Dark Confidant is extra card advantage. Vendillion Click, the ability to take a card from your opponent's hand and put it back in and play it as a flash is beautiful. And I think Delver of Secrets is the best beat down creature here. Now let's look through kind of the rest of the deck and then I'll talk about why I chose this deck as an attempt to try to abuse Temporal Mastery. Um, our land suite, this is really an Esper deck, so it's a blue, black, white deck. We've got your Undergrounds, Tundras, Glacial Forests, Drown, Cataclysm, Swamp, Scrubland, Polluted Deltas, Plains, Marsh Flats, one Crocus. And Crocus is beautiful in Legacy because it allows you to return a legend to their owner's hands. Um, the three caverns of souls, one island, and three flooded strands. Now, there is a high percentage in this deck of search lands. The search lands have beautiful um, synergy with brainstorm and brainstorm type effects because brainstorm doesn't end up being a draw one as it appears where you draw three and put back two actually able to usually draw three useful cards and put back two junk from your hand. So it's a lot more like an Ancestral Recall in this deck, especially with the high number of search lands. Uh, I'm also playing at least one of each basic land, since wastelands are very large in the environment. And I'm not playing wastelands myself, because most of the really good top tier legacy decks uh, make it to where their deck really isn't that impacted by wastelands. And in a three color deck, you really need the color correction. So we've got one Jace the Mind Sculpture, and I may be upping this to two. It's a nice win condition. It works really well with Temporal Mastery, and it's a nice late game anti-control card also. Um, Personal Tutor is in here simply because it's broken with Temporal Mastery. I think in and of itself, it is not the best card out there. Um, I've got a lot of hand, or a bit of hand destruction in the main deck. Inquisition of Corlish and Thoughtseize, both give me an opportunity to look at my opponent's hand, remove something, and hopefully break down some of the combo environments that are in the deck, or that are in the environment. Um, I've got two Force of Wills in here. I, this is a little bit tough for me, only running two in this deck because of how heavily combo-based the legacy environment is. Um, I've got two more in the sideboard, but in many, many games at local tournaments, I just end up siding these out. Unless I'm looking at this deck as for a Grand Prix or major um, Pro Tour type style event, I think the two Force of Wills is probably sufficient for game one, and then you can side in more control. Um, intuition is just beautiful. It allows you to go get three cards. Now, you can, you can grab Brainstorm, Snapcaster, or probably one of the best targets for this overall is Lingering Souls, and I'm running three Lingering Souls main deck, and Lingering Souls just allows you to get blockers out very quickly, and also attackers out. Now let's look for a second, now, some people may recognize the kind of shell of this deck. Um, this deck shell, the basic idea behind it is Tom Martell's Asper deck that won Indianapolis's 
Legacy tournament recently, and this really takes it and adds Delvers for more beatdown and the Temporal Masteries. And the reason that I've added the additional beatdown in this deck is I think Temporal Mastery in your standard control deck is actually not that amazing because you only get an extra land out, you draw a card to replace the card you would have had with Temporal Mastery, but when you add Delver of Secrets or Dark Confidant or Snapcaster or Lingering Souls as Beatdown, that extra turn can end up being a lot of extra damage. If you've got a Dark Confidant out, it can be an extra two card. It will be two cards or netting an extra card with it. I also want to point out that there's one interaction here that I'm a little bit unhappy about with playtesting, and that is really um, Dark Confidant, Temporal Mastery, and Force of Will all in the same deck. This deck has a bit of a disadvantage in that if you draw Temporal Mastery or Force of Will off of Dark Confidant, you're getting rid of between a third and a fourth of your life at a single shot. So you have to be very careful in when to play the Dark Confidants along with the other cards still in the deck. Um, you've got to be careful to manipulate your library in a way that it allows you to not take that 5 to 7 damage because against an aggressive deck like Affinity or Burn, uh, the, it will end the game for you. Um, as I work on other, other decks, I may try a deck without Dark Confidant in here, although I, I really love him. I think the idea of taking an extra turn and getting two cards instead of one is extremely useful. Um, one other thing to point out, that Dark Confidant doesn't actually draw cards. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. So if you want to use the Temporal Mastery for its miracle cost, to make sure that it's the second card down if you've got Dark Confidant out. So that first card comes up, gets put into your hand, and then you follow it up with the Miracle cost during your draw step. I'm also wor still working here on the sideboard. I think this is one of the weaker areas for the deck. I've got Disenchant here which may end up becoming a Revoke Existence. I like the fact that this is an instant, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't remove from the game. Dark Blast is just beautiful against Goblin decks or several other um, decks, and it interacts really well with Intuition because you can drop it into your graveyard and then dredge it every turn. I think the Force of Wills are just mandatory for playing against Combo. They need to come in. Inquisition is also very good against Combo. Parish is beautiful against Progenitus and Elf decks that try to combo out early. It's also really nice against a Maverick deck that's running Heavy Green. Spell Pierce is another anti-combo card, and it, all, it can work against Storm. Surgical Extraction is one of my favorites. It works really well with Intuition and Snapcasters. And several decks like High Tide, if you can fill out their High Tide, you just crush their deck from that point on. The Zealous Persecution is really for mirror matches or other Lingering Souls or token-based decks. I think we're going to see a lot more Lingering Souls in the environment since Tom's deck did so well earlier. And this just allows you to kill off all of theirs and get in a lot of extra damage. The fourth Lingering Souls is to put in the main deck when you're dealing with Beatdown. And the one blue elemental blast there is to slow down on red decks. I'm kind of questionable over this blast, but I'm not sure what else to put in. Closing, I also, this is really a new deck that I put together just after Avacyn. I'm playtesting it now, and I would love to see your feedback, especially any feedback that you have around the sideboard or what other creatures I could consider instead of the Dark Confidant. I, I think Bob is a beautiful card here, but I'm looking for other humans or wizards that I could put in here that would really strengthen the deck and make those extra turns better without the chance of possibly losing a quarter to a third your starting life. Thank you so much for taking a look at this deck. Good luck. I hope you get a chance to give it a try. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks.